What's going on everybody? Welcome. In this one, we're going to be talking about how to work with multiple pieces of data inside of one state variable. In other words, how to work with arrays, or you could say a list of data. Right now, the way our code is, is we have multiple of these employee components with slightly different data. The end goal is to just display one component, but do it inside of a loop, and then just substitute these values in from data coming from an array. So it's going to cut this whole section down to just a few lines of code, and then we're going to move the data elsewhere. The data is going to be stored in state, but it could be easily substituted out to come from an API. So even though we're going to hard code the values into our code right now, don't worry about this long term because it can easily be changed out. Right now how we have it, it's not easy to change out because all the data is spread out across multiple components. So step one is to take all of our data, move it to the top in a single variable. Step two is to replace displaying those components with a loop using map. So that will go through each element in the array and do something with it. So let's get started. First thing from the top, we are going to use a new variable here. So we'll say const, and this is going to be plural for employees and then set employees. Use state. There we go. Now inside of the parentheses is where we can define a default value. And this is going to be an array of multiple employees. And for each element in this array, it's just going to be an object that describes that employee. So what might this look like if we scroll down and we can compare it to this data here, we have name is Caleb, role is intern, and then that image. So it's going to look very similar, but the syntax is a little bit different if you're not familiar with objects. So it's going to be name colon. So basically key value pairs here, Caleb comma, role is going to be, let's just go with developer. And then lastly, we will put the image. And I'm just going to copy this URL down here. So yes, the data is still hard coded. But just as a reminder, this is going to be much easier to substitute out later with real data. So now that we have that first element, we're just going to basically repeat that process for multiple employees. So copy the first one, and I'm just going to paste a few in here. So I'll just go with five for now. Actually, I'll do six and get three per row. Now I'm going to go off of this example I built earlier. So I'm just going to copy their names and their images. Again, you can find images from Pexels. So I just went on Pexels and looked up face and then grabbed some of the first ones I found. Or, you know, if you're working with real data, then you can get either the image data or a link to the image. So go ahead, find some people and let's grab those links. So I'm going to start filling these out. So I'm just going to copy image address and that'll give me a link to wherever that image is, which I'm going to then fill out on this page here. And I'm going to give a variety of roles here. So manager and also another note on how to actually get the URL for that image from Pexels. When you grab an image from here, you can right click. And if you copy image address, it's going to include a little bit of extra stuff. So I'll show you what that means. Here you can see this auto compress and all this extra stuff. You can leave that in if you wish. But just for what I was doing, I just removed any of the extra sizes, limitations or compression stuff. So I just grabbed the image by itself. And that's exactly what I'm going to do for the rest of these. So I'll go ahead and fill those out and then we will meet again. All right, I'm just about to finish up this list and that is now our data. Now to make sure that this list is working correctly, well, we can't see it on the web page because you know, I'm going off of the example app I made, but right now our web page looks exactly the same. So we need to try and display that data going down to where we are displaying all these employee components and we're going to just delete them. So scroll down delete all this crap. Now what we're going to do here is we're going to loop through our state data, which is defined as employees. So to do this, you use the variable name, I'm going to zoom in a little bit now since we have some more space, employees dot map. And this is a function on an array that allows us to go through the elements and execute a function for each one. So it's going to be 
an arrow function inside of the parentheses. Now the reason we're getting like a syntax complaint is because this is within a div, so it's thinking it's just plain text, so what we need to do is we need to wrap it in curly braces. So that is how you understand this fairly complex syntax, and now what we can do is we can expand the curly braces, and this is what's going to happen inside of the function, and any data that we want to work with is going to go into parentheses here, specifically each individual employee is going to be assigned to that employee variable. Now my formatting software just undid my space, so I'm just gonna put that back here. And we'll just say console.log employee. Saving this, confirming our server is going good. We can do a refresh and you can see all of our data showing up here. So each iteration we can refer to an individual employee. Now we only have to do the employee component once inside of this loop and we want that to be a capital E to refer to our component. So employee name is going to be employee.name. So that variable dot name role is going to be employee.role. And then, yep, image is going to be employee.image. Self-closing, beautiful. We save, does a little bit of reformatting for us with prettier. I actually like kind of prefer it all in one line just because I like to use more horizontal space versus making my file hundreds and hundreds of lines but I think there's a lot of other benefits to prettier just like working with teams keeping your file consistent so I'm still using it for this series so far so what do we have now do a refresh nothing is showing up what's going on well since we are now within a function what we want to show up on the page needs to be put inside of a return so we put return and then surround it with parentheses if it's on uh, multiple lines, so that's the syntax for that. Save, and now when we go back, you can see our data shows up. At this point, if we change the interface essentially for this employee component, we only have to change it in one location. So for example, you could easily add in an alt for the image. You could pass that in here instead of across six different uses of the component. Plus, this can expand to, you know, potentially hundreds or thousands of employees without any additional code. Now, at this point, we can get rid of this console log, and also in the employee, we're going to update this message button to update. In theory, that's going to be used to update an individual's information. Now, one more thing I wanna say in this video, you'll get this warning saying each child in a list should have a unique key prop. And what this means is basically React keeps track of all the data on the page, and if you were to update a piece of data, well, it would know exactly which component, which piece of data you're talking about that you want updated. An ID is a way to uniquely identify each element inside of an array so that when you update, you don't have to update the entire page. It can just update the specific piece of data that was changed. So going back into our code, it would be ideal if this had a key attribute and then something to make it unique, such as an employee.id. So what you can do is you can set this to employee ID and then go up here and manually set an ID for each one of these. So ID and then the value one, and then just go through incrementing two, three, four throughout the rest of your data. That's one option, a pretty good solution, but you may not want to add these IDs that don't really mean anything. So here is another option. You can actually use a unique ID that's just generated on the fly, a GUID specifically. A GUID, G-U-I-D, stands for Globally Unique Identifier. In our code, what we're going to do is we are going to install a package. So we'll say npm install UUID, which is Universally Unique Identifier, same thing. Once we have that installed, we can type here and then we'll show how to import it. UUID v4 parentheses. Save that. And we're going to import that from the top here. We will say import v4 as UUID v4 from UUID. Save that. There we go, that should fix the problem. So let's go back to our browser, do a refresh, and we no longer get the warning about the key. Now, if you wanted to see what this looks like, you could just for fun, just try it out, just console logging it. So console.log UUID v4. That's going to show an example of what a UUID looks like. However, 
it's not going to be the same value as this one unless you assign it to a variable because it's going to generate a new one, but it's going to look something like this. So that is your introduction to working with arrays of data. The only thing that we didn't cover in this video that I think is really important is adding an element or editing data inside of that array. So we talked about how to set it initially and how to display it, but we haven't talked about editing or adding to it, which we'll be talking about these things in upcoming episodes, but I think that's enough for this video to 